You know what they say about a wounded animal. Here's your look at the new NECA toys, Predator 2 Ultimate Battle Damage City Hunter. Newly blooded, the city hunter was a young brash Yaucha who joined the Lost Tribe for the first off-world hunt on Earth in 1997. Upon their arrival, the veteran hunters of the tribe dispersed to different various parts of the planet. As decided by Elder Greyback, the final hunt would be the city hunter to test his skills in the concrete jungle of Los Angeles. LA's drug war was expected to be ripe and challenging targets for the eager hunter, who by this point was beyond ready to prove himself. Subtlety was an afterthought while sporting a vast array of tribes' weapons and armor. He quickly became overzealous, carelessly drawing attention to himself as he left evidence of his existence to be tracked by the CIA, all while tracking any armed humans he encountered, worthy or not. Had his killing spree continued much longer, Warrior Predator would have been tasked with retrieving the youth, but City Hunter's erratic methods would soon lead to the demise when he was killed in combat by Lieutenant Mike Harrigan following a long, grueling duel, which ended aboard the Lost Tribe's ship. With the Lost Tribe now gathered and with the confrontation having been witnessed, City Hunter's death was considered honorable. An elder allowed Harrigan to leave before returning home with the City Hunter's body. Before we join in on the hunt, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the ultimate battle damage city hunter predator is from Predator 2. I'm going to take the tape measure right to the very top of his head. And while I'm doing this, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of damage city hunter that we could have a look at in this review. Ultimate battle damage city hunter, that's a bit of a mouthful, stands 8.3. So it's about almost eight and a half, almost eight and a half inches in height. We can switch that over to centimeters, revealing that the City Hunter is 21.1 centimeters tall. Lots of stuff to cover here. So why don't we start first with his two variations of smart disc. One is compact for easy storage or thrown like a Frisbee. Though I would probably advise you not trying to catch that. So you're not going to like the result of it. And the other one is more extended for close combat. Short of the little bit of silver that gets afforded to the one that's extended, they're painted about the same, kind of this warm caramel brown. Mm, warm caramel. You can see it from the inside, the inner mechanics of the smart discs. Very accurate and close enough to one another, except for, again, this one is extended outward. Now, with this smaller compact version of it, of course, can be housed in the side of his leg. For that, we're going to go ahead and pick the figure up. Just move his, excuse me, move his arm out of the way. And located on the side of the City Hunter, you'll see there's a holster. I always find it's best when it comes to putting this into his leg. See, there's this lip of plastic. This is slightly more softer. And I find it sticks out a little bit more at the bottom than it does to the top. If you take it and you just tuck it into the wizard's sleeve like this, it usually seems to be enough that it keeps it in place. It'll stick up a little bit more. You could try to soften that a little bit with a hairdryer to stretch the plastic a little bit wider. But if you sort of tuck it down into the wizard's sleeve, why do we keep calling it a wizard's sleeve? It usually does the job fine enough of keeping the smart disk in place. Or what you can do is, of course, fit it into his hand. Uh, when we look at the extended version for this one, for example, you'll see that there are holes, of course, for his fingers. Well, he does come with a supplied hand that suits the job perfectly. If you take the fingers and fit them into the holes like this, sometimes you usually have to bend the pointer finger but they fit perfectly into those holes. And you can have them holding the smart disc like that. I really like the way that they do that. Fancy instead a Yaucha combi stick? Well, it comes with two versions of it. One is folded up again for convenient storage and one is it fully extended out. I really like the way that these were painted. It seems what they've done here is they've used a darker brown plastic and then brushed over top of it this metallic silver. The end result is a very nicely detailed combi, whether you have it again folded up or extended out for holding in his hand. Similar to the smart disc, there is storage on the back of the Predator this time around. Again, you pick the figure up, spin it around to the back, and you'll see that there's a clip located on the back of his torso. The combi stick just fits into that. It doesn't seem to fit very well. In fact, sometimes when I'm putting it in place, I think I have it in place, and before I know it, it pops right off the clip. Lady Luck seems to be smiling down on me right now. 
So you can store it that way. Technically, you could be able to store the longer combi stick, but certainly from practicality, it would make no sense for him to be carrying around an extended spear on his back. You will want to take the folded up two version, folded up version of the two, and that would be the one that you'd want to clip into place. The only thing I would advise, though, I mean, you can see that the plastic that you're using for the clip, I wouldn't probably put this in too frequently and try to remove it because you could develop stress marks just on the plastic itself. I think likelihood I probably would just end up displaying the combi stick, I think, in his hand. Speaking of his hand, there is one other accessory, technically we'll talk a little bit more about in a second, that is the removable arm, similar to, of course, the arm he loses in Predator 2. So we'll go ahead and just remove that for the time being. City Hunter will also come in clue with a pair of swappable hands. Now, I've already taken the liberty of actually removing one of the hands. It was the hand that was over here, because he does come with a pair of gestured hands, just basically with the fingers extended out like this. Up close and personal like this, you can certainly see all the additional coloring that Ekatoys added to even just the hands. And that's even before we start looking at the Predator itself. So it comes with like this hand, which would of course go on this side of his body. The other hand on the other hand, basically is just this hand right here, just a mere flip of it. And then of course he comes with this hand that we've already looked at already, perfect for holding the smart disc in his hand. He also includes two swappable heads. The one that we're first going to look at is the one stock out of the packaging, and then we'll switch it to more familiar looking sights, a sight for sore eyes. This particular one has the breathing mask attached to the front of his face. In case you're curious, no, the mask isn't removable. You can't detach it. It's molded to the rest of his head. It certainly breaks things up a bit if you want to change up the looks of your city hunter, because normally you would either get the traditional mask over top of it, the brown mask that he has in the movie, or you would have him unmasked. I appreciate the fact that they throw in a third option, another way to display the figure in your collection. Some nice detailing done to the face as well as the head. You can even see those peepers peering back at you in a, almost a lighter, it seems almost like a gray color of those eyes. Really looks nice. The only thing about this, this mask is you'll see that there's a hose that runs underneath it. It's actually sandwiched just below the mask. But again, like, the, like I said, this mask is removable. But the hose doesn't seem to attach to anything on the figure. At least not that I can see. I thought, if anything, there would have been a hole around where his plasma caster would have been. But there isn't. So instead, what I sort of do for the time being is I just kind of tuck it in there. I guess they didn't want to permanently attach or leave it in a place where if you plugged it into a hole and then went to remove the head, you would inadvertently just break the hose. But like I said, just for the time being, I'm tucking it to the back there. Of course, he does have the other swappable head sculpt. One last look, though, at this one here. The gold is nice. That additional red is also a nice touch down below at the bottom of his mask. Like Overall, it's a really good looking head sculpt. But if you are more traditional with your dis displaying of City Hunter, then he also comes in clue with this head sculpt here as well. Ah, that's more familiar. The top crest, though, is about the same. I would be hard-pressed to actually see if there's a difference between the pattern work from one to the other. And again, like it looks like the eyes are also the same as well. Again, the only difference really from one to the other is the fact that this one does have the breathing mask, and yes, of course, that hose that doesn't seem to attach to anything. If you want to change the heads, all you're going to do is hold on to the torso and wiggle this back and forth. Again, I can probably understand now why this hose doesn't attach to anything, because if you're not careful and forget that you've plugged it in somewhere, the moment you yank this off, you're probably, as a result of it, going to break this hose too. Again, you're just going to hold on to the torso, pop it right off. The cylinder post that they decided to go with, most of the Predators that NECA are releasing are using the post system, which is a whole lot easier than using a ball peg. From there, you're going to go ahead and take the replacement head. Sort of helps to fan the hair away from the peg because you, you really don't want the peg to get lodged with hair around it. And you just wiggle that in place, just like that. I'm surprised, actually, while I was doing it, I didn't lose the other accessory that comes included with the figure. And that's actually his arm, which I guess we can talk about right now. Let's just get make sure the head's all in place. Fan out those lovely locks of his. There we go. Uh, but this, just quickly, this is the alternate head sculpt. And to bring in the one that had the breathing mask, so you can see the difference between the two. It's not really much different. 
Could they technically have just had it so you could remove the mandibles from the front and replace it with the mask? I guess that could have been an option as well, and they could have just saved the plastic of producing a secondary of the same mold. But I guess this is a lot easier. Mask would be more likely than to lose if this was a separate appliance piece. But you can see, yeah, the heads aren't that much different from one another. Let's go ahead and put that to the side. Now, obviously, if you are one that collects Predator figures, you're probably going to be interested then in this as well. He comes with a mask. The mask I've never been a big fan of. Certainly City Hunter, I think, is inferior to Jungle Hunter's mask design, if you ask me. I never really like the brown. I think I like the silver a lot more. It does have some nice sculpting going for it. You could really imagine looking at this, though while the material is plastic, you could really think that this was made of metal. If we flip it around the inside, you can see that they've sculpted the inside just as well as they've sculpted the outside. I thought perhaps this would have been able to fit over top of his face. And while it does, barely, it doesn't seem to stay in place. In fact, a lot of times, if I am putting it onto the figure's head like this, it ends up me having to bring it down a little bit lower for it to sit on something. And it doesn't look quite right. It really should be a little bit higher. I don't know if it really is supposed to go onto his face or if it's just something that is kept separate. Again, it stays on there more by friction and the shape lining up on the inside. But it does, especially when you see it from the side, it looks like it's just something that's sitting on top of an existing face. But I guess there is that option. If you look at it from the front, I guess it's not so bad. The more you see it from the side, it's yeah, it seems just a little on the off side. I think more the plan of it, even though it does technically fit on his face, is more so probably just to display it along next to the figure or have it him holding it in his hand. Speaking of holding things in hands, anyone who's seen Predator 2 will probably know the outcome of this city hunter is the fact that he does lose his arm. And this is a really neat function that they've incorporated with the figure. He does have a detachable arm. All you do is just twist this off. Very little twisting actually is involved. And you remove and detach a now standalone arm for the Predator. And you can see the da damage left behind. Unfortunately, it does involve just twisting a, a very small peg into his arm. I probably would have even made the, the peg longer. Because when you are twisting it onto his forearm, let me just do it again here. I feel like not nearly enough of it holds in place. Obviously, when you're putting it in place too, you want to make sure you line the shapes up so that it looks consistent all the way across. I think of anything, when I took this out of the packaging, I think the arm was twisted the other way around. Or no, no, that's not true. The arm was separate. When I put it on the first time, I put it on the wrong way and it, was, it wasn't lining up properly. See, I'm kind of lining it up here. I, I do like the coloring on it. I just wish like the arm stayed better in place. If you're providing, don't bang it. Or I would suggest if you're deciding, say, to put a combi stick in his hand, I would probably put it first in his hand and then attach the, the arm, the arm piece, to the rest of his forearm. Because if you try to put weapons or anything into his hand as it is right now, the forearm tends to free itself. Or at least that peg tends to free itself. You find your arm just falling off altogether. No, no, not your arm. The City Hunter's arm. Let's talk about losing limbs. Let's get a closer look at the paint applications now on the figure. Now, of course, if he's going to have the title Battle Damage, you'd hope, if anything, there would be a few traces of that fluorescent Yaucha blood. And luckily, he does have it, though not at an obnoxious level. I think they could have really gone crazy with the amount of blood all over the figure's body, but instead, they're selective. Of course, the place where he loses his arm is going to have the reflective green there, but he's only got it in a few places on his body, specifically at the top of his torso, around the lower mid-abdomen area, and a few little trace amounts there on the front skirting and the side of his leg. I like that they controlled it, because again, it could have got really obnoxious if they just put it on everywhere on the figure. In fact, the only other place that he has it, if you see it from the side here, he's got a little wound there on the side of his torso, and he's got a little bit of blood up the top corner there as well. Seeing as we're certainly in the area anyways, we can talk a little bit about his armor. You can see, now this one doesn't have a plasma caster. Normally he'd have the cannon right around here, but this one doesn't have it. What he does though have certainly is some really nice paintwork. Again, consistent with these NECA releases. I like, for starters, it seems like they probably started with like a more of a bluish gray and brushed over top of it this, this brown. It really does have almost like an oxidized look to it especially when you see it from the shoulder here. 
I've got zero real complaints when it comes to the paint on this guy. Paint is really, really good. And again, I like that it's only in few trace amounts of blood. It's not every single place. It doesn't have to be everywhere, but it's in just the right amounts and just the right amount of, of, of coloring too. It's a really nice green too. And it's not just simply green. I would almost describe it as snot green, but that's not the most nicest of ways of describing the colors. There's actually like a little bit of yellow in there as well. So it's not even just the green by itself. You can see along areas here that everywhere you see there's green. There's a little bit of yellow going along with that as well. Of course, when it comes to the figure, he's got also a few other things that go along with him, like a few little satch pouches that sit on the side of the figure. He's actually got one on the back here as well. Technically, this could just be brought to the front, but I like to more display them from the back here. Some nice detailing done also to the sides of his legs. Of course, the leg guard pieces he's got there, the holstered section for his smart disc we've already had a look at. And overall, like just really nice sculpting and paint applications to this guy. Well, it isn't really my favorite of the Predators from any of the films. I will say, though, to the credit of City Hunter, sorry, the Battle Damage City Hunter, he really has some exquisite looking paint going on here. Tackling the posability here on City Hunter, depending on what head you decide to go with. We're just going to run with this one for the rest of this review. His head rotates back and forth. It hinges up and it hinges down on that cylinder post. As for his arms, his arms hinge out, but at varying degrees. This one arm, just due to the nature of the fact he's got this additional shoulder piece that's on the top of his arm, results in only allowing his arm to hinge out at about a 45 degree angle. The other side on the other side seems to be a little bit less than that, simply just because, again, he's got that shoulder piece, but it's also butting up against this larger shoulder, this shoulder pad that sits on top of his torso. He's a little bit more limited, but you can still bring, yes, the, the arms forward and back fine and good. Just be careful, of course, while you're doing it on this side, because as you're rotating the arm back and forth, you're probably going to lose this a few couple of times. It does have a double hinge on the elbow. We're going to kind of stick on this side. His hand rotates back and forth. It's a little bit more limited, of course, because he's got the gauntlet blades. Speaking of the gauntlet blades, in, in case you're curious, the gauntlet blades do extend out. You can bring them out like this and then just tuck them back, but... Probably not a good idea to push it like this, simply just because they're made of a softer plastic. For his torso, he has an upper torso ball joint. A much more looser lower torso ball joint. And then for the legs, the legs split out. There I go, I knew the arm would fall off sooner or later. He has a full splits on the legs. You can bring the legs forward and back. He has a swivel at the top cut, basically where that's attaching to the ball joint. He has that swivel area there. Double hinge on the knee. He has no articulation from the calf because this is basically just all one sculpted lower leg. And of course, he does have articulation in the feet. While you're doing it, you're probably going to prick yourself a few times because these spikes that stick out from his footing, his feet, uh, are a little on the prickly side. You move the feet back and forth this way. You can also ankle pivot them this way as well. Sort of a blessing, I suppose, that the arm fell off. The arm's not on the floor, mind you. It is right here. Again, the only thing I probably would have said when it comes to this guy having a removable limb is probably make the uh, the peg just a little bit longer, just so it would be more a little more securely planted in place when you decide to put the arm in. But I think for a case like this, when it comes to displaying the Battle Damage City Hunter, I'm going to display him like his namesake says. I'm going to make him battle damage, and what a better way to make him battle damage on a display than have his arm completely off. It doesn't happen that often that Nakatoys does release a Yaucha with a removable limb. So the fact that he has it as one of his gimmicks, I'm certainly going to play into that when it comes to displaying the figure. He's going to be displayed without his arm, as I think he should be if, after all, you're displaying him based on the end of the movie. Though the Battle Damage City Hunter Predator does come with a lot of accessories, not to mention two pretty sweet swappable heads. It's a bit strange that he didn't come in clue with an open version of his medical kit, that medic pack that he uses in the movie to tend to his wounds. But I guess if you look at the tally count of the things he already comes included with, not to mention that, again, they did give you two heads instead of one. I think that's more than enough. And really, I wouldn't be displaying the City Hunter anyways with the medical pack. It was just more wishful thinking than anything else. The appreciation certainly is thrown out there to Nekatoys for giving us the swappable head that does have that breathing mask. And it does, you know, really, it does break up the way that the Predators normally look on your shelf. You either have them with their helmets on or you have them without their helmets. You don't get very many Predators that have the little breathing mask. 
So that's a nice touch that they included it. But at the end of the day, I think I'm probably going to display the City Hunter that you're currently seeing here in Final Looks, probably the way that you're seeing it in Final Looks with his arm removed. Maybe if anything, I might put the combi stick on the back of his torso. But other than that, I think he looks great. And the fact that he does have a removable limb doesn't stay well in place enough. Of course, if you're banging and moving the figure around on an articulation, then yes, the arm's going to fall off. But again, the fact that they included a removable arm in the first place is a really nice touch on NECA's part. And normally a predator that I don't really care for, the City Hunter, you know my feelings when it comes to City Hunter, I will say that this figure may have redeemed the City Hunter just a little bit more. I really like the way that this one turned out. A big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys that provided this sample of Predator 2, the ultimate battle damage City Hunter. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get that all in the title. If you've picked up this figure, or just on this watching of this review alone, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of it. And also, if you're new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and make sure you're coming back with Predators, P Predator Peepers Peeled. Because not only are we going to be looking at some more Predator reviews, but we're also going to be looking at some more NECA reviews as well. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.